was asking me about if I'd watch that. Uh, it's a nice thing, could you? Oh, yeah. Like, um, it was like, do you think, he, do you think he just looked bad because uh, it was Craig Jones and he's like the world champion? First off, Craig Jones is like the, the bridesmaid. <laughs> the world champion. World, world's greatest supplement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just fuck it. His social media's fucking good, isn't it? But, yeah. Uh, I, I then showed him that video and I've seen it. Uh, Craig Jones rolling with that 10 year old. Is it? No. Because he's definitely worth a watch. Is this recording? Yeah. Go and check. Uh, go and check Craig Jones's uh, Instagram and check check out the video of him playing around with this. No, that sounds wrong. He's, he's rolling. <laughs> <laughs> he's not playing around with a kid. <laughs> he's, uh, he's rolling with a kid. <laughs> he's just he's knocked on the door. Yeah. Now. He's uh, he's being. Uh, so, so the, the video I started watching now is just watching this video of Craig Jones just rolling with this kid, you know, just like giving him the opportunity to play around and whatever. But this kid's attacking stuff, like this kid's quiet. He's going for it, you know, he's all positional great, he's got good intention on what he wants to do, it's like fun. But Craig Jones is a big fun with him, doing some <laughs> stupid stuff like spinning around, but this kid's going for it, he's trying to kill him. Oh yeah, um, he's going for a hanging arm. <laughs> yeah, he's just hanging off him like a climbing frame, attacking arm bars. Uh, attacking for heel hooks and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, when my, when my mate Mark said, uh, is this anything, you know, he, he was asking, could you get him embarrassed because Craig Jones is who he is? This is exactly the same sort of stuff that he was doing with Aston Kutcher, mm. but he had absolutely no clue what to do. No. And this kid was just going for it. Like, Aston Kutcher couldn't even take his back. And this, this kid's like... This kid is Birkin. Yeah, this kid took, took his back. But yeah, obviously, heel hooks like a child. <laughs> <laughs> That's quality, that. Yeah, really yeah. That, that that just puts the nail in. <laughs> uh, Ashton Kutcher's brand. So that was my response. <laughs> yeah. And then we had an argument, you know, not an argument, but a conversation about uh, why has he got a brown belt. And we basically had to say, I, I just told him to listen to the episode that we did. Yeah. So we basically went into full length discussion about that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but. So I hope people have been the wrong wrong interpretation of it. <laughs> is there any other interpretation? Two and a half stripes there and I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, don't get the wrong end, don't get the wrong end of sticking it. As well as not getting the wrong end of the stick, which Craig Jones playing with kids. Uh, yeah. He's into that. Yeah, no, no. He's, he's like, he's happy married. <laughs> Without Jerry's uh, leather coat. Yeah. Um, what else is new in Jiu Jitsu? He's actually in, in UK Jiu Jitsu, so we've got to yeah. look at the American scene again. Combat Worlds. I've it's not good. watched it yet. I need, I've, got, uh, I've seen some of the highlights from the Roots all with us. Yeah. Um, very impressive. Yeah. The the buggy choke one. Like we were talking about it before, like is that a flexible person, a skinny person, or a long limb person submission? Um no, I'm not not being able to successfully get it off, I'd say it's all three. because <laughs> uh, I have zero, zero of those attributes. Uh, I've got quite a lot, I've got long arms and like I've got long arms relative to torso and leg length. So I can kind of get into that position without a body there, but I'm, I'm wondering whether a combination of long limbs but two smaller torsos is going to be what pulls off because if you, from what I've tried, if you're doing it on somebody that's a similar sort of size to me and you know, you're both around 80 to 90 kilos, it's, I, I could be stretch out strong but I'm not getting anywhere near that. Yeah, like, um, just not too shit size torso, of like, Yeah. Um, it's, it's an interesting position though, isn't it? It's going to certainly revolutionise side control. If only was that catcher. Yeah. It's kind of for some sort of evolution where you're no longer sat with that underhook and mm -hmm. cross face because you're in danger. You're in danger. And what, what I was trying to look at from the, uh, the video, because it's not, I've seen it before and it's a Teddy I've tried before, but I'm not overly familiar with the mechanics of it. I was trying to look at it and see if the you can hit an angle in the same way that you know you might you might be struggling to get a triangle on somebody, but you can mm -hmm. manipulate the angle and get in it. And I couldn't quite see a, a similar correlation to that. No. Uh, but I, again, it's not what I've been showed in detail by somebody who knows how to do it well. It's just 
by dissecting it from watching videos. Um, but, but it just seems like I've, my torso is too thick in relation to my arm length. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But you, you were saying it's kind of the same. You used to all to get that as well, weren't you? Yes. Like, I just tried it. I can get about mid forearm in. And I even tried to like triangle my legs to see if I would change anything. No, it didn't change. It's amazing though, isn't it? It's like, um, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody thinks Jiu Jitsu is finished, but, you know, it's a fairly new submission that's come from a position that everybody's familiar with. Yeah, and everyone feels safe in. And everyone feels, feels safe in. And, uh, you know, there's just new things happening in Jiu Jitsu all the time, like a, a constant evolution of infinite possibilities and yeah. positions. And, you know, if you've got a creative mind and you've got a, you know, you can create something that fits to your body type mm. and is effective, the literally the possibilities are infinite. I think that's the whole thing. I think that's what attracts a lot of people to Jiu Jitsu is you can be shown a flight certain things, but at the end of the day, you're always going to mold it to your style of play and your body type and your energy for the day yeah. know, as well. Like, you're not going to go and try and kill if you're tired and if you're full of energy you're not tend to gonna have a slow round a slow round. Yeah. So I think that's part of the beauty of it as well. Like you adapt it to to yourself. A lot of people say as well like, oh I don't you know, have I got the right body type for jujitsu, you know, I you know, I'm not sure, blah blah blah, whatever. Like I probably can't do it. I'm not flexible enough. There is a style for everybody. Yeah. And if one of those styles that your instructor has doesn't suit you, you're going to pick up bits mm. um, that you can implement into your own style. And you, you basically figure out what works by trial and error. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the great thing about MMA and Jiu Jitsu is every body type can do it and yeah. do it well. Um, like there was a, an older gen that used to train with our factory, uh, Blue Bell, his, his style of play. It's pretty much just deconstruct what you're doing and he was like the most frustrating but also mind entertaining round because you're trying things and you just can't explain like, you could expose his back but you couldn't find his neck you could isolate an arm but you couldn't finish with the arm um, if you were in his closed guard you were attacking the collars constantly and you could sweep him, but you could win the position, but you, it was very, very difficult to find a submission. And that was his thing of frustrating you, frustrating you, frustrating you, until you make a mistake, and then he tries to capitalize on it. Um, and like I said, you just adapt it to how you're feeling that day, yeah. or your style of play in general. Yeah, some, some people have lazy jiu-jitsu, mm. like where they want to spend as little energy as possible. Oh yeah. And that's great. Um, other people want to come in and, you know, it's like that 30 seconds into a light round beam where everybody's fucking crippled. <laughs> um, I know a couple of people like that. And some people, it starts off like a flow round and yeah. then you get a good position. And it's like a fucking red rag to a bull. And you go, oh, okay, this is the round that we're at. <laughs> Um, but then you better hope I don't get back on top. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes with them as well, and it's sort of like you start off as a floor round, and then you'll sort of like apply a bit more pinch in a position, and then you'll knees off, and then the other person will apply a bit more pinch. And then you sort of just keep escalating the pinch, and then about three minutes into it, you sort of like, I'm going at like 90% now. That's, that's consensual. <laughs> I'm talking about a sucker punch. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, you know, you go in with the attention and it's nice and then just instant, yeah, you think they've got something good. I, I got described to me uh, as a new bond with a mind <laughs> uh, the, the last time the last time it happened. So, um, yeah, I know who you are. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> to be fair, I do, I do say to people, I, if, if you're wanting like a really gnarly tough round, just, I'm, I'm open to them rounds, um, but just be prepared for me to put the same amount of analysis and toughness yeah, onto you. you. You get what you give that. <laughs> yeah. um, like, I won't, I won't dream of doing like a bread cutter choke on someone who's been quite nice, but if it's quite an alley round and they're sort of really sort of pushing the face and stuff, I'd be like, I'll happily, in an okay, this is not, not, not in the key, I'll happily just 
press that goes, it's not enough to submit to tap yet, but it's enough to make you panic. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I'll probably admit to being a psychopath now, but if you ever, when you got somebody in a position like that, you, like, you gave him what the limit of comfort is, and you, you, put, in the, you put in as much pressure on as you know that they're not quite going to tap. And then if you're more like they're about to tap, just ease it off. <laughs> Give them a little bit of breathing room, they put it back in. And it's always after. They're usually doing trying, something yeah, first. They try to wrist lock on you. So. Yeah, yeah. Still. <laughs> well, they will love wrist lock. Yeah, well, I've actually been playing around the uh, option from the arm bar to use a wrist lock to either open up the arm bar or just finish finish with the arm bar, which has been quite nice. So it's, um, it's a good distraction for one, but uh, also you can get a nice secondary submission, which is a shitty little. <laughs> But they work. They do um, uh, risk off, piss people off. Mm. Mm. I think like what people don't understand is like how quick a risk lock goes on though as well. I've seen people snap them on and I'm like there's no need, like there's no need to snap an arm bar on, yeah, let alone on the wrist which is sort of like just take hold of it. Then they, if they don't tap to it, that's fine. Take something else. You are obviously slow enough to catch a wrist lock and the I find them fairly difficult sometimes to isolate the wrist locks yeah. because they can keep the hands in and fire them away. But if you can find a wrist lock, you can find something else. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember when I've done like uh, specific situational rounds before and I've um, like the intention for my round I was told was to get a wrist lock. And like actually trying to get the wrist locks hard work. Yeah. Um, you kind of got to hide it behind the stuff because as soon as somebody figures out if you're doing situational rounds that you're going for a wrist lock, <laughs> just make a nice tight fist. Oh, balls are really just like anything. No. Yeah. Um, what else is new in jiu-jitsu? Nothing. Keelan's want the uh, going more in depth with his jiu-jitsu X. Yeah. Which looks pretty good actually. Looks really good. I had a little scope on the website again. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just the step by step process of actually going through techniques rather than being like here's a dvd just watch it as and when it's sort of like it seems like there's a lesson one lesson two lesson three and if it's sort of like got some sort of qualification aspects where you have to show you understand the first lesson before you progress to the next lesson then for me it gets 10 out of 10. he was talking about uh in the, i can't remember whether it would have been a, the most recent podcast, but he was talking about, it might have just been him talking on his YouTube about um, answering questions, basically. And somebody had said that you're going to change it to like a subscription style Netflix based thing, uh, which I thought was interesting. But he, he said only if the demand is there for it and you find that that's where the, the desire you know, comes from down the line. Um, I don't know, would that, be, would that be a better model? Me personally, I'm more likely to pay a subscription, and over the course of the year, the more likely to get more money out of me. Yeah. Because um, I'd have, for that that service, I'd happily pay what 20, 25 pound a month. Because um, you're essentially getting access to their minds, and I think you could easily put there's a minimum year subscription. Like put that in the put that in the, con in the contract or whatever you sign up for. As well as having the option to purchase them individually if that's what people want. Um, but yeah, I'd happily pay mm -hmm. the monthly for it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you look at the sort of content that's up on there already, uh, I think JT Torres has just uh, put a new instruction up. Uh, who else has got stuff on there? Lucas Barbo is a hanger. Um, I think it's going to pretty much be Atos online just without Galba. Do you think we'll see uh, Gordon Ryan releasing an instruction on Jiu-Jitsu X? Not on Jiu-Jitsu X, but <laughs> I can see him being petty enough to try and launch his own website um, in a similar way on Jiu-Jitsu X. But they'll obviously get a lot of subscribers, a lot of paying people, but I don't think they'll get they'll have the same aesthetic feel or even the same sort of response to it like it won't be well done do you think you'll see Ash, Ashton Kutcher releasing an exception yeah yeah how to look like a white belt when you're a brown belt <laughs> might be a deception tactic <laughs> you know you don't want to be able to know how good you are no chance <laughs> <laughs> no 
Like, no. <laughs> no. But, yeah, I don't know if I can see it. I don't know that's what type of series coming out or websites now coming out. But, you know, honestly, I, I can't see myself subscribing to it. I don't know, I mean, it's not something that I've ever heard that they'll lead into the path of people to go down. Uh, I don't know, because Gordon's main source of income is his instructionals. I don't know what the plan is now take out the man. down in Puerto Rico. Just seems like the Sun Baby and Dana has not taken off his Sun Hat, Rash Guard or Joggers. I love you. <laughs> Did you see that picture? Like, what well, goes through that man's head? Like, obviously, he's a Jiu Jitsu genius. But, come on, man. He likes rush guards. They're such a practical piece of clothing. No, they're not. They wash quick, but they also start to smell quick if you wear them all the time. I don't think, uh, I don't think John Banner has run out of rash guards. I'm sure he's got an influence supply of rush guards. True. True, but he's not exactly the model citizens. We might love them, is it? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at a rash guard that Banner is wearing and going, you know what, that's the rash guard I want to buy next. <laughs> With a funny pack and, uh... Well, and that's a different question. If they come with a pair of uh, like them, them brown leather sandals and a pair of white socks, yeah. <laughs> like so socks and slides, I look like, like I, I, I'm a big fan of wearing. But those brown sandals and the white socks is fully damn it. Yeah, I, I wear that all the time. I wear all that stuff all the time. <laughs> but those like to the proper dad sandals, yeah. like those I can see wearing those pair of joggers. Rash guard, a sun hat with the white sun <laughs> <laughs> just to put his nose. Mate, if you don't want to get a sunburn, it's you know, you're, uh, I've got absolutely no hair on top. I've got to, I've got to be careful when I go to a sunny place. Back to 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. I went to uh, Mexico um, a couple of well, years ago, actually, a couple of years ago. I've put back to 50 on. I thought, great, I'm, I'm sorted. I went down to the beach, uh, down in the sea, whatever. It was fucking roasting. Just all started sweating off me. I didn't realise that the sun cream had sweated off as well. So the whole top of my head burnt. Stop it. No, the, the fact that 50 did nothing because it basically just got pushed off my head by the sweat. Um, and then I can tell you now, having a shower and trying to shave your head after that is not pleasant. I hate getting sunburned. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it at all. And I'm not keen on like using a razor on my head just yet. Like, I always come out with a bad rash, like on, on whenever I do it. So I can imagine just how mm. uncomfortable that must have been. <coughs> no, it was, it was, it was not pleasant. But bald people problems. I might just start dressing like John Banner and, uh, and counteract it. I might dress like John Banner for Halloween, actually. <laughs> 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 like a Dan at her party. Yeah. Instead of like a, because my sister's mentioned having like a Uber Thurman, like, theme party type ones where it's sort of like all the films she's featured in. Oh, not even the third Tarantino party. Yeah. So where you sort of come dressed in like different films, everyone just comes dressed in different versions of Danaher. Obviously, the third was the thing that you sprang to mind to come to. I was, was going to always kill Bill yeah. <laughs> in the yellow team. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's way more disturbing than fucking Danaher yeah. is. Uh... I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say do it because <laughs> if Bruce Lee could do it, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he weighs about 60 kilos, right? <laughs> <laughs> I look like Johnny Vegas with a yellow suit on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, in the Halloween next year, and we can do something and we'll do uh, a Dallaher party. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a Dallaher thing party. He's going to come, like, he's, he's going to be the sort of rebel that comes to go on the ride. Jerry? Jerry probably would. This Craig Jones does um, <laughs> with his leather jacket on. <laughs> with his leather jacket on, living the dream. Uh, what else? It's been a bit of a quiet week, hasn't yeah, it? There's absolutely nothing going on. I think the it's big been... change has been the relaxing of the lockdown, though. Yeah. Which yep. I don't really understand how London's tier two and Manchester is tier three, considering where the R numbers are. And Good old Bulge was telling us under under the um, R1, the R number under the underneath one is where we need to be to all start opening things back up. Now last time I checked we were 0. 0.85 and London was like 1.1. So 
I don't understand it. Like, how how can you expect people to abide by it when you know, there's clear favoritism going on there? Like, I've heard the argument of people saying, well, London's like essential for the economy. Whose economy is that? It's not my economy. Like, my economy is running my business and making sure that my students are okay and my clients are okay. Yeah. Like, just because some big business doesn't want to change its structure and let people work from home, that's not my problem. Yeah, yeah the, fact, the financial impact was I think a lot of people that I've spoken to, the general consensus as well this second time round, I don't know whether it's because it's winter or the novelty of that, uh, the summer lockdown is kind of worn off, but I think a lot of people are struggling more uh, from like a mental health aspect yeah. this second time round, there's probably various factors contributing to that, but um, you know, more and more of this separation is going to be difficult for people to deal with. Yeah, uh, I know it's like, uh, I'd like a home um, program to follow and things are, and hit that second week and I was like, I've got no drive to do any form of training at all. Like, I, I wasn't at a point, you know, where it's sort of like, I'm feeling down all the time and things like that. I still, still had energy to do, like go to work and you know, progress, try and progress the business. But actually doing the things I enjoy, like training and things like that, I had zero drive to do it. I just waking up going, like the night before going, do you know what? I'm going to make an effort to go to the gym spider. Wake up in the morning going, do you know what? I'm not quite feeling it yet. I'll go after lunch, get as much time going. I'll, I'll go later on. Later on comes, I'm like, yeah, I'll just go tomorrow. And then tomorrow just continues right the way through. Yeah, I think it's a slippery slope, isn't it? If you can make yourself get into that attitude. Yeah. For me, I just do it. Yeah. I just do it. Um, and I, I usually find that as soon as I start moving, I get a bit of energy. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's just getting a bit of blood flow to the brain, isn't it? Mm. And getting loosened up. On days like that, I just do a lot of warm up. Yeah. Until I feel like I'm sweating. And then I probably won't go up a little bit more and then I'm good to go then. Yeah, fair. Um, like I, uh, I've got that big heavy sandbag. Uh, I tried it, well, I successfully tried to do it, but I had, uh, there's one day where I needed to do chest. The sandbag is 90 kilos. You can't take any out of it. It's just 90 kilos. So trying to do four presses with that in the car park where I live, uh, was interesting because you have to roll it on top of you first and then bridge it up with your hips and then press it. Um, I was actually surprised I did it because that was the first time I did it. But these, um, I've got some videos of some sandbag stuff on my Instagram actually that people can go look at. But Dan Strauss has got a load of good stuff up yeah. on his as well. Uh, like getting into a squat hold and ripping a deck of cards. Um. <laughs> that, that, that man <laughs> is like a wizard with with what he does with weights yeah. and throwing things around. He's just released his grip instructional. I see. Yeah. yeah, I think that's. Uh, that, I think that's going to be put on the Christmas list. For yeah, the he's in his garage, his uh, gym setup. I think it looks like it's in his garage, but his, yeah. his home gym setup is awesome, isn't it? It's like yes. a grip lab, um, all the captains of Crush, like rolling thunder handles, or unique, bizarre grip attachments, like that globe. Yeah. Um, that one looks cool. Really like that. So, yeah, go and check out Dan Strauss's page for um, some good ideas on like how to improve your grip and just check out that instruction as well. That looks good. It's not the Bellator Dan Strauss, it's the Raspberry Ape. Raspberry Ape, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Dan Strauss that we had on the podcast. How long ago? About two months ago, wasn't it? Was it September? Yeah, it wasn't the uh, it wasn't it was the, the last interview, it was it? It was the one before, before that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was talking about some of that uh, the group training stuff on there as well. But some bags are some bags are really good, uh, versatile too, mm. actually. And uh, you can make you know, you, don't have, you don't have to buy a sandbag from a company that sells them. You can kind of make your own. Yeah. Um, you can squat with them. You can deadlift with them. You can depending on what weight it is, overhead press. You can do rows. Carries a good bit of kit, yeah. really good bit of kit. Definitely an underestimated bit of kit, even if you've got a full arsenal of gym kit to train with. Like in the gym that I work at, um, you've got every bit of equipment that you can imagine um, uh, cables, obviously bars and kettlebells, as well as a lot of plate, um, plate assisted and conventional machines. I still use a sandbag mm -hmm. every single week in my training. There's not anything that can replicate it. Yeah. And uh, that grip aspect that you get 
as well from, from training with the sandbags has a massive carry out to do jiu-jitsu. It's not that isometric hold in the squeeze in that. Yeah. It, the EHA, you can't replace it. Like whenever I've trained with similar bits of kit, the feeling afterwards of sort of like, even after 20, 30 minutes into it, you're sort of going, that's a, that's a workout. Yeah. I, nothing replaces it. You, you can tell straight away if you're doing something as simple as just like a carries, you know, like yeah. front-loaded carries. Maybe go gable grip on these carries and practice that squeeze. It's like mm. practicing cross uh, cross face pressure. Yeah. Um, Even like, just body lock. Yeah, body lock in it. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, great bit of kit. And you know, you don't have to start heavy. Uh, you can get sandbags that go all the way up to 180 kilos. Uh, but maybe start with something like 50 kilos. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's actually quite heavy. Yeah. Um, Definitely work your way up in weight. You can get some adjustable size ones uh, where you can increase the weight from like the one I've got at the moment. I'm uh, I'm actually picking up a Cerberus one that's 120. Yeah, when I put an order on that. But the one that I've got at the moment, you can have anything from 40 kilos up to 100. Uh, and it's adjustable. You just have to put more sand in it and then tie it down mm. in a different way. But yeah, 40 kilos is probably ample to start off with. Yeah. Um, because there's no handles on it, it's not like a 40 kilo dumbbell. Um, it's a lot more challenging. But for anyone who's ever tried to pick up like a 20 or 25 kilo medicine bar, mm -hmm. will know how awkward and difficult a task it is. Yeah. Now make that into a bigger object and double the weight. Yeah. And yeah, it's not going to be an easy day. Yeah, it's good. I, I think it was in that one, it's trying as well. That I've not had the, the, really the opportunity to do is um, at the stones. Yeah. I really want to get. Uh, get on some atlas stones and see how the sandbag power transfers over onto those. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably just need to get down to a gym and, and give that a go. If anybody knows any gyms with a, with a good selection of atlas stones, message me. It's just a very niche. Yeah, I know, there's, I know there's a couple of gyms that I could go to, but they've got like you know, quite a small selection of the stones. Yeah. Um, so if anybody knows anywhere that I can go for that, message me. Because uh, that's something that I want to go. Or if, you, or if you've got a gym with that, let me know and I'll come down. Uh, what, are you, what are you training for at the moment? In jits and in the gym? Um, jits, I'm just, I just want to get back to training to be honest now, regularly. Um, so I'm just trying to, just trying to negotiate the, like, yeah, navigate around the sort of actual logistics about that because obviously, Current restrictions, you've got to be part of that elite program. Um, fortunately, I am, so I can get, get some sort of training in. And in my actual bubble, um, try support bubble thing, um, I've got my girlfriend's little brother who trains. So we tend to get try and get a couple rounds in a week. Um, and it's quite uh, interesting because, like, he's got a different perspective of looking at. The way that I look at techniques, so he's got some very interesting questions, and we troubleshoot quite a bit with it. Um, and he's like, "You yeah, say so you've rolled with him, and he's yeah." When he when he says "little brother," he's not like a ten year old. Oh brother. no, no, he's he's uh, eighteen and he's filled out quite a bit as well. Hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know whether he's been on the SIE, but he's definitely he's definitely brought up. Yeah, like I remember um, SIE in Sandbach. <laughs> I think the last time he rolled, he took my back and. He was like doing something with his hooks where he was stretching me out, but he had underneath my arms, so he was sort of fully stretching me. And then he came out and then got underneath my chin, and I was like, "What's going on here?" So then after that, sort of like, "Where did you, where did you figure that out?" Because it's not something that I've done to him, or something that I've seen or experienced. And he sort of he was talking about that, and I was like, "All right, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna work on this because I, I like the I like the concept behind it." Um, so yeah, it's just trying to just get regular training in at the moment and then in the gym I'm going to make keep fluctuating between whether I want to drop down to like try and get down to 90 kilos and be as big and strong as I can at that or stay around like the 97 mark stay super heavy and just get as big as strong as like athletic as I can in that um, not decided yet um, but I'm just trying to get strong and athletic and again just enjoy enjoying lifting at the moment like, yeah. there's no tournaments coming up i would like to try and get down for the european adcc trials 
um, or just any competition that's going on there. There's no downside to being stronger, no matter what weight you can be at. Very true. And I, I was talking to you about this thing. week. Now, because there is no tournaments or anything really to aim for, it is a good opportunity for people to focus on getting stronger yeah. in the gym. Um, there's, there's no downside to being stronger. No, no. Like anybody, anybody can leave a comment or right, come on and argue with me about a downside to being stronger. Like, there, there, is, there is no downside no. to being stronger. You, know, you might not want to get more muscular or yeah. you might want to get bigger, but that is not muscle uh, getting stronger. Yeah, muscle size does not equate your strength. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've like you all rope somebody who's seventy kilos and they feel stronger than you. Yeah, it's always surprising. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything that you're training for at the moment? Yes, um, in the gym. Uh, yes, like less from the uh, the physical side of things, obviously, because it's almost impossible to do so. Um, trying to expand my, uh, say, like strategy and develop that, that sp uh, spider diagram mm. or tree diagram of what my positional flows look like and is it improving the the option um, the option set from each position. So basically, trying to run through that mentally as well as when I can get the, the opportunity to put that into practice as well and kind of troubleshoot it um, and just trying to expand the, the portfolio of ideas and techniques that are available from uh, my stronger positions to start off with so essentially trying to improve my A game uh, but then looking at how my current defensive skill set can be complemented to turn that into getting back onto my offensive Mm. So kind of like a two-pronged strategy on that at the moment, which is good. It seems to be working really well, actually. Um, and, and hopefully that can be something that will translate over well when we can get back into uh, some more consistent rolling with different bodies. Uh, in the gym, I'm always just trying to get stronger. Yeah. I'm always just trying to get stronger. Uh, I don't often feel like my cardio is at a massive detriment when I roll. Um, I do have an element of cardio training in my training, but it's non-conventional, so it'll be with sandbags. Yeah. So it's always cardio with resistance. Uh, I know we like talking talking about size. I'm sitting at at the moment 92. I always just want to be bigger. Like I've always had it in my head that I wanted to be 100 kilos. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I'll probably kind of hover around 90. I was the years probably struggled to get up to 90, just not eating enough. Um, not, not really. I, I think I always fell into that trap of like, I'm try, still trying to break the habit of it. Is always wanting to have abs. Yeah. Um, and I, I think only now am I just getting to the point really where I can go like, yeah, fuck it. Actually, do you know what? I'm not that important. If I want to try and push all your kilos, I'm just gonna have to go for it. Yeah. Um, but then I, it's the same dilemma, isn't it? Is a 90 kilo person who's strong better or I don't know. The, the other thing I always think about as well is jujitsu is great and whatever, but if you are ever to use it in a in a street fight, there's no weight class in the no. streets. No. So be as fucking heavy as you can be. Yeah, very um, true. You, you know, you, you, everyone's rolled with something that's been significantly heavy. Now. There's a guy you know, I used to roll with and train with often. He was 130 kilos, and uh, you know we all like to uh, think that uh, you know jujitsu is a small person sport where you can adapt and change but if you've never been under 130 kilos you yeah. know that, that that weight advantage is massive oh yeah um so if you close the gap on that and if you can be the bigger guy in, in my mind why not yeah well it's like um like i told you about when i've like rolled with um chaddy over at asw like easily one of the strongest grapplers i've ever trained with um very talented mma very talented grappler um and it was very, very hard to isolate submissions or even hold a strong position against it. Um, and it would never tire. And like there was one, I remember one time, I've told you about this, where I managed to find an armbar on him. And I was putting that much drive into it to try and separate his arms that I was getting cramp in my hamstrings. And as I started to separate the arms, he just bicep curl back and then sort of looked at me and goes, bicep curls them lad. And just sort of turned into me and then started rolling again. I was like, my hamstring nearly snapped 
try to apply that pressure. Yeah. And I think like my just sort of by perspective of the drive, I think my deadlift at the time was around between 180 and 200 kilos. So it's a lot of force going through. Yeah. <laughs> so, the arm. so essentially, he's able to do a 200 kilo bicep curl <laughs> with one arm. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. No disadvantage to being stronger. Certainly. Not at all. It's just proof to point. You know, I'm not defense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, no, it's just open to be back to training again properly soon and yeah the, there's not really much going on is there in no. the jiu-jitsu front try like uh, you know like i'm doing at the moment try and keep your mind on the goal for when you can get back in uh i know certainly doing this podcast and all the video breakdowns that we did early on helped me massively yeah. keeping my mental focus on it um do that you know you can't you can't train doesn't mean that you can't progress. No. Um, so just keep your mind on it. Yeah. Try and try and stay focused. Bit of discipline to do some training as well, wherever you can. If you if you're not a member of the gym, I know gyms are back open now for the time being. At least try and get yourself down to a gym and get strong uh, for when you can get back. You don't you don't want you you don't want your physicality to be a disadvantage when you get back on the mat. Oh, that's all. Um, no real excuse really for being unfit. No. And also in the same light, like. If you are keeping fit, ready to be active, but you just lost that drive to train for that week or so, it's okay. Just give yourself that little bit of a mental break and then hit the next week just with more drive. Yep. Like, give yourself a deadline of, okay, not feeling this week, but Monday, turn on the table on it. And if you need a bit of motivation about grappling, listen to the Grapplers Academy. That's it. Or you can hit us up and we'll yeah. give like we'll try and give advice on what we personally do as well. If somebody if uh, you know if you've got somebody as well that's moaning that they've not got the motivation to do anything or they didn't feel like they, you know, you can tell that they need a bit of inspiration for doing something. Like point them in the direction of the podcast. If you're still listening to this, chances are that you've listened to a lot of the other stuff we put out, some of the videos, and you've taken something from it, even if it, you know, every handful of episodes you've taken a little thing from, yeah. um, send them somebody else's way. That might be the thing that gives them the inspiration to get going again. No, definitely. Um, I know that works for me sometimes, just the one thing will be enough to get me, get, like, spark my interest again. Yeah. And uh, keep me moving forward. So, um, do that, share the, share the jujitsu love. Yeah, share, like, hit us up on the socials at the Grapplers Academy on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, all your podcast and streaming services. Um, yeah, everything's at the Grapplers Academy.